it must have been a long wait for the people of Israel who were in Babylon before they were able to come home. And the first reading today from the prophet Isaiah is called the Book of Comfort, trying to get into the hearts of those people who were longing to come home, trying to get into their hearts and change their pessimism. They're waiting for a new and glorious Jerusalem, but the reality is that the Jerusalem they knew was gone, it was destroyed. So prophet Isaiah is trying to comfort them and give them inspiration. He's giving us inspiration as well as we're waiting. Not for December 25th, but waiting. Have you ever waited for someone? Someone special to show up or someone to call you or someone to get in touch with you? Have you ever gone out to meet them? Like the people of Israel went out to meet John the Baptist because he's announcing something. Someone's coming and he's greater than I. I, am, I can't even undo his, his sandal straps. So the people of Israel were going out and waiting and looking forward. When I was a kid, Michael and my brother and I would be down the shore for the summer. We would be in a little cottage in Union Beach. And on Friday nights, this is before cell phones and before uh, emails and communication was a regular phone on the wall. Remember those with the curly wires? Well, my mother would get a call. Okay, I'll be down normal time, my father. So Michael and I, around 3, 3.30, would start out. We'd go on a little journey. We walked at least two miles toward the exit of the highway where we were looking forward to my father picking us up. And sure enough, that waiting was, was good because what he and I, Michael and I, would do on our way is talk about what we're going to do for the weekend with my father here. Yeah, my, fa my mother was there, my uncle and aunt were there at the house and all that. But when my father came, there was a, a, like a different kind of waiting, a, a fulfillment that we looked forward to every week. And so we'd walk out, and then he'd pick us up. Now, we'd, we'd talk about the, the major things that would have to go on that weekend. One, after supper, of course, after supper, Italians have to eat supper first, and then we'd go to Sal's for ice cream. I would get lots of nuts on my Sunday. My brother would get regular Sunday with a lot, a lot of whipped cream. These are the things that kids look forward to. We kids were looking forward to. Then, if, if he was in a good mood, I mean a really, really good mood, we'd go to Keensburg that night. That was a, a boardwalk and games of chance. And of course, if we really played our cards right, we'd get some extra money. So to play. So we'd go and walk around and we'd play the chances and we'd come back winning then losing. We'd come back to my father to touch base and the whole family was there at that point. My father, my, my mother, my aunt in a wheelchair, my, my uncle, everybody. We were all walking around. But this is what we looked forward to. We, kids looking forward to an immediate return on our investment of waiting. So the waiting was a fulfillment of all our expectations. The next day, we'd be on the beach, Saturday, bright and early. He had a habit of laying in the sand, which I never got onto. But I'd have a blanket, he, and my brother would be on the blanket with me, and we'd go out and swimming. And then my cousins and I would be joining us, and my father would do games in the, in, in, in the water. I mean, he'd pick us up, and we'd do chicken and fight, and he'd swim out and teach us how to swim. Everything beyond our expectations. And this happened every week. Every week he came down. Sometimes he didn't come down until Saturday, but when he came down Friday, we had the whole weekend for, with him. So waiting and having your expectations fulfilled segment, an instant in comparison to what the people of Israel are going through. As years ago, they're coming home from Babylon and going to their home, their expectations. Some of them fulfilled it, and their expectations were beyond their hopes and dreams. And yet they only had that longing for the Messiah to come. So they're waiting, and they're waiting for something more. Although they have some here, they're waiting for something more. They're waiting for the total fulfillment. And now us, for Christians, it's the season of Advent, and we're waiting to meet God once again. 
We meet the Lord in the Eucharist, we meet him in his word, but once again, we sort of get stuck on our calendars, and that's all right, but that's how we, we count life through time. And the time of the year, December, looks forward, as the Christian gathers, to look forward to the, the celebration of the birth of Jesus in the flesh when it happened the first time. So we wait, and sometimes we're disappointed, sometimes we wait with special longing, sometimes we wait with other people who are little people who really, really know how to wait and, and expect and hope and dream. And that's where all the carols are so often written about them. But how do we meet God when he comes? And how do we meet God here and now? St. Teresa of Avila talked about meeting God in good conversation. She talked about meeting God in good sermons. She talked about meeting God in loving one another. So we who are the Christians have this sense of waiting and hoping we know what already happened, but we look forward to his return in glory. And in the meantime, we celebrate his, his physical birth on earth. And we, that doesn't diminish our waiting, our longing for his return in glory. Waiting. In a sense, as Teresa is talking to us, I think, so many of us are like available to God immediately. We're like God's Instagram. People look at us and they see God. People listen to us and they hear God. People watch us and they see God in action. Now we've got to look at what our actions and our words and our behaviors are. Because we who are Christians have the fulfillment of the promise. The whole promise came through in Jesus. And he, he destroyed so many false expectations. He didn't come with a crown. He wasn't born in a stable. I mean, he was born in a stable, not a palace. He didn't come on a, a white charger. He came on the back of a mule. He came as a migrant. He came as an immigrant. So maybe that can just tweet a little bit how we wait and where our expectations of our Messiah, not a new Jerusalem, not any other place in the world, but our Messiah, who is the fulfillment, will one day invite us to the new and heavenly Jerusalem. How are we waiting? What are we doing? Sometimes our charity, and we really got to be careful of this, our charity can put us into contact with God. It doesn't matter. There's the, the Christmas tree is out there and there's gifts around the bottom of it for children. This side, the church collects the food for the, the pantry. That seems little, doesn't it? So you go to the department store, you put down your card and you get a gift, you wrap it up and bring it to some strange kid that you'll never meet. We're doing it for God. That gift is God. He's the recipient of that gift, whatever it is. Whatever charity, whatever goodness, whatever smile, whatever positive conversation, whether it's with parties or with our office or with our home or around the table, opportunities to meet God, the one we're looking forward to. He's here and now. He will come again, but he's here and now. He's available to us. And, and Teresa of Avila had, had something there. You want to meet God? Go to a party and enjoy yourselves and smile and giggle and, and, and do the Christmas carols and be peaceful and joyful and experience the presence of God in people, one another. You want to experience God? Bring him with you when you visit a friend or a stranger or a nursing home, or the person next door, or when you wrap up a thing that's going to maybe be a surprise for that little kid or, or a little something for that, that neighbor, that elderly neighbor. These are gifts for God. And these are opportunities to meet God. There was a reason the book of comfort, Isaiah's book of comfort, was written. 
because people were coming home and some of them had great expectations and some of them, you know what, some of them in, in, in Babylon decided to do, they were in prison for Babylon for generations, they decided to stay there because they didn't want to do the work that would have taken to rebuild. They didn't want to walk through the desert to go to their homeland. So they stayed. So going forward and looking forward to a, whatever our goal is takes time and work. Today, I mean, open up the newspapers. Should we be a, a country, forget the world right now, just us, just look at ourselves. Should we be a country that looks forward to the end of sexual harassment? It shouldn't exist. We are, a, quote, a Christian country. We shouldn't use one another, whatever their gender is, for our own good feelings, power, place in society. We should look forward to the end of sexual harassment. We should look forward to the end of poverty. But we've got to work on it. We've got to go through the desert, as the people of Israel went through the desert, and announce the coming of the Lord in our actions. Some preach, some work, some talk, some write. It doesn't matter how you get the word across. Go to the high mountain, as the prophet says, and announce what we're all about. But sometimes we can't do it with words. See, God is so available to us. He's so ready to, to greet us. And yet, if we miss the point of why he's coming and what the, re, the fulfillment would be, then we're going to miss that the fact that we have to go through the desert sometime and experience hard work to remove racial injustice, to, 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 to blind ourselves from the colors of one another. Because with that observation of each other's colors and differences come prejudice and hate and them and us. We're going through the desert, we're looking forward to the Messiah, and it's our role to prepare his way we are God's Instagram. We really are his face among people. Our actions, our Christian actions, have to speak very clearly for what we're waiting for. The return of the Messiah, the coming of the King. Years ago, Middle Ages, when the Pope would go from place to place in the papal estates before Italy was what it is now in France and so on, he would send legates ahead of him so that when he stopped at a hotel or whatever they stopped at, he could eat. So the legate would go ahead of him and check out restaurants. And of course, not all, but most of the, most of the popes were Italian. So they had this thing for wine. So. The legate would go ahead and he would find a place, what we call restaurants today. And if the wine was acceptable, he would write, Est, it is. One day, one legate went across and ahead of the Pope and he came upon a restaurant and he tasted the wine and he was so absolutely flabbergasted with the taste of this wine and I don't know what town it was. Would you remember, John, would you remember what town that was? Okay, it was, it's in Italy, guaranteed. Forgot the town, because we were there. And on the restaurant outside that town, he wrote, est, est, est. It is, it is, it is, exclamation point. God sends us ahead of him. So people look at us and they say, it is, est, or, in great moments of charity and fighting discrimination and standing up for people's rights, men and women. They can look at us and say, est, est, est. This is surely a Christian. This is definitely the, the Christian, the, the one who imitates Christ, the one who is God's 
face to the earth based on our respect for one another. It wasn't unusual for Michael and I to go ahead and look for my father and be rewarded with a wonderful weekend, how many weekends during the season that we experienced. That's normal. And Christ came for us to respect the normal of life. He came to us so we'd understand human nature through his eyes. We'd understand the love of one another through his example. We'd understand his goal in our lives. Now we're here. This is a calendar day, a calendar year, and yet we're not looking forward to December 25th. We're looking forward to his return in glory when every face here looks like God. When the love that he brought to us through his trials and, and cross and all the experiences that he went through, he brought it to us nevertheless and expects us to bring it to one another. Let's go out and meet him and find the Lord in each other.